A security guard at an Edmonton shopping center was frequently bullied by co-workers and customers alike due to his resemblance to Pee Wee Herman, the TV character. Between this and his frustration due to being an incel, he snapped in the summer of 2016. Let's take a journey and find out just what happened with Sheldon Bentley. The case today is going to be a bit shorter than normal, but interesting all the same. It takes place in Edmonton, the capital city of Alberta, Canada, just under 200 miles north of Calgary. Edmonton is known for being a big hockey city and for being a large producer of oil, among other things. Unfortunately, it's also home to Sheldon Bentley. Barely anything is publicly known about Sheldon Bentley's childhood, so I'll be brief. He was raised in a broken home by his mother, Patricia Nelson. Bentley states he was abused as a child and had an unstable upbringing, but didn't go into specifics on either topic. As he progressed through middle and high school, he was frequently bullied. He often lamented that he couldn't get a girlfriend, which would be the trend all the way into his late 20s. One could assume that being bullied led him into pursuing a job that held some sort of authority over people. A few years after high school in 2004, at around age 22, Sheldon got into the field of private security, becoming a security guard. After being in security for over a decade, he ended up as a security guard for the Lucky 97, a local supermarket. To say he let that little bit of power go to his head would be a massive understatement. To put it simply, Sheldon was a completely unhinged asshole with anger issues. He saw himself as entirely morally just and despised or looked down on anyone who he deemed was not. Above all else, Sheldon really hated the homeless population and drug and or alcohol addicts. He once stated, a decent person does not engage in rampant moral depravity such as drug and alcohol use. He often took his job far too serious. While a security guard's job can sometimes be pretty serious, Sheldon took it way too far on many occasions. To unleash some of his aggression, he often approached the mildest of scenarios with extreme anger. If a scenario didn't exist, he had a tendency to make one so that he would have an excuse to fight. Ken Jacobs still clearly remembers one afternoon at the Lucky 97. I was just going to grab a bag of chips and the security guard came on to me. Are you, you're stealing those chips? I was standing in line. Automatically, the fist came out and he started swinging at me. It was that fast. It happened so fast. Jacobs complained to police. No charges were laid. He says his story is not unusual, though. Many people have had run-ins with this guard. But I've had previous altercations with him just walking through the parking lot, him mouthing off all the time they dropped the ball. If they would have taken my statement seriously, he would have been fired two years ago. This anger only ramped up over time. One large catalyst was when he managed to start dating a woman when he was 27 years old. He lost his virginity to this woman and later stated it was the best experience of his life. The woman broke it off with him after just five months. He blamed his mother for the breakup for unknown reasons. This was his one and only romantic relationship, a fact that made him even more angry as time went on. As mentioned earlier, Sheldon often yelled at passerbys that were just walking across the lot. He would also physically fight people on the Lucky 97 property. A guy named Joseph Desjarlais made the mistake of trying to cool off with a bottle of water in the shade behind the store on a hot June day. Sheldon approached him on one of his patrols yelling at him before quickly grabbing his arm and twisting it behind his back. While marching Joseph off of the supermarket property, he made sure to tell him that he knew self-defense and hand-to-hand -hand combat and to not try him. To play a bit of devil's advocate, this is just one side of the story, and upon reading hundreds of reviews, it does seem like there was a subset of homeless people on the property that were rude to customers and generally just behaved poorly. The store was also in a fairly bad area. If you mix all of these elements with a guy who is perpetually angry, it's going to end badly. This doesn't excuse Sheldon's douchebaggery and what eventually happened, but it is important to get kind of a full picture. The majority of the homeless population in the area all knew Sheldon due to his overly aggressive behavior and displays of violence. However, they thought of him as more of a joke rather than a true threat due to his appearance and size, often calling him Pee Wee Herman, both to his face and behind his back. To put it lightly, Sheldon didn't think this insult was funny. In fact, it enraged him so much that his co-workers often had to talk him down during these events. 
He already hated the homeless and now they were consistently making fun of him and making his life hell. This started a feud between Sheldon and the homeless people on the Lucky 97 property. His patrol partner, a man named Muhammad Sharma, had to frequently de-escalate situations by telling Sheldon things such as, you're not Pee-wee, you're more like Captain America. This seemed to calm him down and make him temporarily happy. It makes sense as Captain America was a character he later admitted to idolizing and even sort of seeing himself as. Muhammad would later say that Sheldon scared him due to his instability and tendency to bring weapons to work with him such as nunchucks, pepper spray, and a pellet gun. He even had a black whip that he kept in his locker. On top of bringing his weapons to and from work, he also had military grade combat boots with a steel tip given to him by a former corrections officer. A forensic psychiatrist later said of Sheldon, he appears to be a rather fearful man, afraid of the world around him. She continued, his personality and his obsessional need for precision and correctness have almost certainly impeded him in the area of work and relationships. A later forensic assessment went into further detail, stating that Sheldon felt inferior to other men and brought the weapons to work in order to make himself feel more confident. Between the whip, nunchucks, bear mace, pellet gun, and knives, it was as if he thought he was going into a war zone every day at work. I mean, he did often fight with people and get attacked pretty frequently, but it seems like many of those scuffles were escalated by him. The ironic part about his disdain for homeless people is, at the time, he was nearly homeless himself, having to stay at a place known as Dwayne's Home, a transitional housing facility for people that are on the fringe of homelessness. When he wasn't staying at Dwayne's house, he stayed at a local YMCA shelter in the area. Between the constant heckling from co-workers, customers, and homeless people, along with his inability to get a girlfriend, it was only a matter of time before a person as volatile as Sheldon would snap. Top that off with his financial troubles and being on the verge of homelessness, and it was a recipe for disaster. Sheldon's terrible attitude continued into the afternoon of July 31st, 2016, where there would be no going back from his outburst of anger this time. Sheldon and his patrol partner Muhammad were on duty at the Lucky 97 property one afternoon when Muhammad came upon a man that was either in a deep sleep or had passed out drunk in an alcove in the back alley behind the store, clutching a $20 bill in his hand. This man was 51-year-old Donald Doucette. He was a former chef that had been battling alcoholism for most of his adult life, but had just started seeking treatment twice per week at Alcoholics Anonymous while living with his daughter for the past two years. His family described him as very outgoing, upbeat, and recently very religious, often attending church every Sunday with his mother. He still battled his alcohol addiction daily, but was said to have been doing the right things to aid himself in the fight. Muhammad nudged Donald multiple times to try and get him to move. He was breathing, but just wouldn't wake up. Muhammad decided to radio Sheldon to come assist him. Shortly afterward, Sheldon began walking up the alley, donning his heavy combat boots with the steel tip. When he saw the homeless man before him, he turned to Muhammad and asked, Do you see anyone looking? Before Muhammad could even answer, Sheldon stomped on Donald's stomach very hard, making an audible thumping noise. As Donald awoke in pain, Sheldon then forcefully kicked him in the knee. Get up, I don't have all day, he said. Taken aback by Sheldon's actions, but being scared of him, Muhammad didn't say anything. Donald then stated, Why are you so mean? to Sheldon, as the two security guards moved him and propped him up against a fence across from the alleyway. Sheldon then snatched the $20 bill from Donald's hand and took it, stating to his partner, He doesn't need it. Donald sat against the fence as the two left and died within mere minutes of them leaving. When he had been stomped by Sheldon's heavy combat boot, it caused two large tears in the soft tissue in his abdomen, which led to massive internal bleeding. A medical examiner later testified that he would have been in a massive amount of pain before dying as two quarts of blood pulled into his abdomen. The human body only holds five to six quarts to give you guys an idea of how much internal bleeding he suffered. Sheldon then smugly walked into a nearby liquor store within the shopping center where he worked. He asked the cashier to clean off his new $20 bill with cleaning spray. At this point, Sheldon didn't know the man had died, so this was probably to clean the money before he pocketed it rather than removing evidence. Knowing what we know about Sheldon, he more than likely viewed the money as dirty having come from a homeless person. This point was further proven by Sheldon then asking the clerk to clean his glove that had held the dollar, smirking as he did so. At around 4.45 p.m., two passerbys found Donald unresponsive slumped against a fence near 107A Avenue and 96th Street. Police were called to the scene and EMS arrived shortly after. 
Donald Doucette was quickly pronounced dead at the scene. Muhammad approached Sheldon shortly after, telling him, That guy you kicked, he's dead now. Sheldon began to panic, urging Muhammad not to say anything. Don't tell them that I kicked him, because it's probably because of my kick that he died. Later stating, I kicked him pretty hard. Police didn't think Donald's death was suspicious initially. That was until Muhammad Sharma, feeling immense guilt over what he had witnessed the previous night, called authorities the morning after the incident, telling them all about Sheldon stomping on Donald with the heavy combat boots. With this information, police went to the Lucky 97 manager who quickly handed over surveillance tapes to them. It didn't take long for detectives to see that the story they were given lined up with surveillance footage from the shopping center. Although, the exact place in the alley where Donald was stomped and ultimately killed was in a camera's blind spot, a fact that Sheldon later claimed to know about. Donald's autopsy was conducted just two days after that on August 3rd, where the medical examiner determined he had died from blunt abdominal trauma. Police descended upon Sheldon on August 4th, arresting him without incident. They found his prized nunchucks and BB gun in the backpack he had with him at the time. When speaking to police, Bentley described the stress he was under in his life when he killed Doucette, including his being an incel for the past four years leading up to the incident. If you clicked on this video, you probably already know what an incel is. This will be real quick, I promise. Incel is short for involuntary celibacy. The term most often refers to men who cannot have sex despite wanting to, usually for personality reasons that deter any potential partners. In turn, they are angry at multiple aspects of the world in general, but mostly at women for denying them sex, in their view. A subset of incels plot to do heinous things, while an even smaller subset actually follow through with those plans. Sheldon also blamed being harassed by people while he was working as a security guard as well as being referred to as Pee-wee due to his resemblance to Pee-wee Herman as catalysts for his actions. Here's the real kicker that gets people riled up though. After all this, he was only charged with manslaughter and robbery, not murder as most might think. While the maximum penalty for manslaughter in Canada is life imprisonment with parole possibility, those instances are extremely rare, with the majority of manslaughter sentences falling under 10 years, which meant more than likely Sheldon wouldn't be serving a significant amount of time for his actions. The next month, that being September, he attempted to get out on bail. After the judge heard evidence from the case, he was denied. However, he tried again in March 2017 and was finally approved. Sheldon Bentley was a free man until his trial in June of the following year. Well, June 14th, 2018 rolled around and Sheldon found himself in a courtroom having to defend his actions. During the majority of the trial, he had his head down, seemingly full of guilt and possible remorse, refusing to even look at Donald's friends and family as they read their victim impact statements. Donald's 23-year-old daughter, Tiana Doucette Moody, placed a photo of her father facing the judge, then stated, My father is an innocent man who did not deserve to die in an alley. He was a father and a loving person, and he had a brother and a sister and a mother who all loved him. He may have been struggling in his life, but he was a person too. When Sheldon did address the family, he stood with hands behind his back, turning to face the court and Donald's family. Your father did not deserve to die that day. My actions on that day were nothing short of reprehensible. I'm sorry for what I've taken from you. I can understand if you all can never truly forgive me. I understand you all despise me. He then told the court his role model was Captain America. I would like you to know that I'm truly not a bad person, he said. I've tried to live a life of goodness. I would like this court to understand I am no threat to the public. I will use Captain America's values to govern my actions going forward. Captain America would be ashamed of my crime. Shortly after, the judge found Sheldon guilty of both manslaughter and robbery. Outside of the courthouse, his mother was visibly upset when speaking to reporters. On the opposite side of that, Tiana Dusat Moody was happy despite the relatively small punishment given to Sheldon. Knowing that somebody's obviously paying for the crime and the assault that happened with my dad, it brings me peace, knowing that he's not going to do it again and that justice has been served. She went on to say that because this crime didn't go unnoticed, that her father wasn't just another homeless person found in an alley. On August 29th, 2018, Sheldon was back in court for the official sentencing, receiving four years in prison for manslaughter and robbery. Due to being in pretrial custody for around 28 months, Sheldon Bentley would only be locked up for around 20 months or so out of the four-year sentence, meaning he should have been released at some point amidst the COVID pandemic in April 2020. It's unclear if he returned to the Lucky 97 supermarket to resume work as a security guard, but I did find this review from 2022, however, this could be anybody. 
Bit of a weird case, but I hope you guys found it interesting. If you did, I'm going to be more consistent about posting unique cases at least once per week. If that's something you're interested in, I'd really appreciate your subscription. You can also let me know what you think about this case in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.